Hey everyone, welcome back to Garnet Reviews, where Mark Siegel of York Sale reaches out and asks to want to pop along and take a look at his new latest listing. The answer is always yes. Before I even know what it is I'm looking at, I know I'm looking at a quality listing. And the same can be said for this one. This is a 2018 Sailfish 275 dual console. This boat has only had one owner and it's been kept and maintained in dry stack storage. And as you can see, she's powered by twin Yamaha 150 horse outboard engines. And these engines only have 116 hours on the clock. The boat's been extremely well maintained inside and out. And it's only on the market as the owner is looking to retire from boating. I was impressed with all those canopy covers, which I'll show you in more detail once we get on board. I was also impressed with the deep shine that you get off of this hull. And I love that flared bow that she has. I'd imagine that when this one's underway, it's going to be a very dry boat for everybody on board, with all that spray being diverted outside. So this one measures in at 28 foot in length. She's got a beam of 9 feet, and she's got a bridge clearance of just over 8 feet. She's extremely well equipped, and one of those optional upgrades includes a bow thruster, so it's a very easy boat to manoeuvre in the marina. And I was also impressed to see that this one's fitted with trim tabs. You don't always see that in a boat that's powered by outboards at this size. She's also got great boarding access from the water. That's that way if you're into swimming and diving, it's easy enough to get back on board. And if I zoom in closely, you'll see this one's also got underwater lighting. Some people use that just for pure cosmetics at night, but this actually does help also when you're doing night fishing or night diving. And as I climb on board, First impressions, I was really impressed with this aft cockpit. There's so much space here regardless of what type of activity you want to take part in. You see we've got both rod holders and drinks holders along the transom. We've got plenty of pop-up cleats, both port and starboard. I like that there's a shower right here whenever you're boarding fresh in from the water. And if you're into fishing, this can also be used as a deck wash too. We've got stereo controls out here. And then we've got a lock and transom door. I always like these on boats, that way it keeps pets and kids inside and helps make you feel safer when you're out enjoying a day with the family. So if you're into fishing, on the starboard side you'll see we've got rod holders built into the side of the hull. But we also have a 30 gallon live well that's built into the starboard side. And I like the fact that this has got a clear screen so you can keep an eye on everything in there. But it's also got LED lighting as well. From a mechanical and electrical side of things, there's great access to the fuel filters, the batteries, the battery isolator switches, and then on the transom itself, as well as having those rod holders and drink holders, in the middle there's actually a retractable towing post, so if you're into wakeboarding, water skiing, tubing, things like that, the family can enjoy that on board with you as well. And on any boat, space is always a premium, but more so on smaller boats like this. And the aft cockpit has got a great layout, where on the port side, it's got bolster seats that can pop out. But these are easy to fold away, so if you need more space for the likes of fishing, you can do that. But if you're into more family cruising, the great comfort here, and you'll get two or three adults on here, no problem at all. And on the deck, you see here, we've got additional storage. This could also be used as a fish box. But this one's got rope and chain. And you can see here, we also have a stern anchor. As I mentioned before, I liked all the canopy covers in here. They're really clear to see through. Sometimes when I've been on boats, although they've got a clear screen, you can hardly make anything out. But this one gives you plenty of comfort, but great visibility too. And to starboard, we've got a wet bar. And underneath that, it's actually got a diesel generator in here. And that wet bar has got a sink. And there is 14 gallons of fresh water on board. And there's 188 gallons of fuel. On the port side, I've got a seat here and underneath is storage. This storage is actually in a self-draining compartment, so you can also fill this up with ice and put a bunch of cold drinks in there. And this one's got a well-equipped helm. We've got a multifunction display that's got the plotter and the GPS and sounder. You've also got the engine instrumentation. You've got the Garmin VHF, bow thruster, windlass, and trim tab controls, etc. And up overhead, this actually has air conditioning installed. So if you keep those canopies down, you can make this very cool for a Florida day on the water. And it's not something you normally see in a dual console of this size. And on the deck, we've got a large storage compartment. And as I focus in on the deck, I like the non-slip deck that was on this one. 
I also liked how flush all the hatch covers were. If you were barefoot on here, you wouldn't have any issue. But in this storage compartment, you can see you can put rods in here, boat hooks, and you could put skis in if you were into water sports. And on the port side, I was pleasantly surprised to find that this one actually comes with a head compartment. And it's got quite good headroom because you like step down into it. And the faucet you see at the sink, that's actually a retractable shower head. So if you wanted to, you can use it as a shower or as a toilet. And when a boat's not in use, this is a great storage area if you want to put some of the seat cushions down in here. And that centre window, that one opens up and gives you more access to the bow. or also gives you more ventilation. Get that fresh air flowing. But you can close the bow off completely as well. But if I crawl through and take a look in here, you'll see here there's plenty of seating. There's plenty of handhold, you got the stereo speakers, those drinks holders, those USB ports on either side of the hull. Note that chrome plate in the forward section. There's a cockpit table that you can mount in here, which I'll show you in a second. And if I lift the cushion off, you'll see more of that non-slip deck has been put on here. So if you wanted to use this as a casting platform, you could easily remove the cushions and use the forward section as a fishing platform. But there is storage underneath all these seats as well. And I liked how everything locks into place, so when the boat's underway, you don't need to worry about any of these hatch covers popping open. And on the deck, we've got more storage, but again, this can be used as a fish box. And as you can see, this is a self-draining cockpit. So here, if you wanted to, you can close off the bow section completely, but this also gives access to the storage that's underneath the helm. And in here, you can see that cockpit table that I just mentioned that you can mount in the bow, or you can mount in the aft cockpit. I also liked how easy it was to access all the wiring to the electronics. As much as I don't have an issue with anything that's on board, if you ever do want to upgrade at a later date, it should be easy enough to do, since you have that access. So I'd like to thank Mark again for allowing me the opportunity to take a look at this one. I'll leave a link in the description to his website. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on this one, if you could leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And as always, I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.